back. Woohoo. I got it figured out. Hopefully, I didn't lose anybody. Okay. Oop, now it's too loud. <laughs> Listen, you got to have glitches every now and then. Just the nature of the beast. It's just the way it is. So I'll give you a couple more minutes and then we'll start. In case you missed it, yesterday, last night after work, I went and picked up my paint chips for Bonnie Hunter's mystery quilt. I always pick up enough for the shop in case people don't have them. I have a ton of previous year chips, too, because I always bought, get extra. So I am taking the red out. I don't know what I'm going to substitute it with yet, but I have a lot of chips at the shop to play with and figure out a color. Red is just not my color. Even with the holidays, I decorate in blues and teals and not too much red. It's just not my thing. I'm not a, the traditional red and green. Okay, some business. Next week's video is being postponed. We're going to not do it because the 22 blocks that I cut for next week are the same as this week's. They're just a little bit different sizes. So that gives you two weeks to get this week and next week's blocks three weeks done before we have the following video. Um... The next one, I believe, after this is Flying Geese, which are easy, but I'm going to come up with, I think I'm going to play around with a couple of options for making them a couple of ways. I think it's Flying Geese. It's either Flying Geese or Half Square Triangles. I don't know. My brain is fried. I think that's all I have to tell you. <laughs> Yes, it's been, again, another Sunday of me not sleeping. But, but, yeah, we're doing it. And then after this, I get to go paint some cabinets. All right, let's get going. And hopefully, if you, sh you do come in and I didn't miss you, you will let me know that you're here, please. Especially you, Miss Stephanie, because I need to know if you want me to put a stack of these in your box on Tuesday before I ship it out. I know you're doing this, so I wasn't sure if you got the chip paint chips or not. Let me know. Okay, let's see. Today's blocks, and basically all the blocks for the next two weeks are... Um, Log cabins. So today we're doing the mini and the large. And then next week, you will be doing on your own the medium and the small. This is actually a small, I think. Is this a small? I don't know. I'm losing track. No, I think this is the, um, the medium right here that I've already done. So I don't know if you can tell, but you see all these little stacks. I have more over here. These are all my uh, small log cabins that I've already cut. And I have a whole bunch on my sewing table. But this is what I wanted to point out, okay? To this week, we're only doing two large and six minis. The two large and the six minis are here. They're the same fabrics for all six minis and both of the, lar of the large. On the medium, you've got six, two of three different colorways. And on the small, we've got six in this colorway. Two in this colorway, two in this colorway, two in this colorway, two in this colorway. Uh, I got two in this teal. We got two in orange, and we've got two in this. So basically, what I'm just letting you know is that we have six.
that are going to be the same colors, same fabrics. The rest of them are only two, and that is for the small. Hopefully you got that. Hopefully you understand it, because it took me a little while of cutting. I've been cutting for about three hours on all of these this morning, just to make sure I had the right fabrics going back and forth to my pictures and the pattern. Because that's one thing I will say, the pattern is not great telling you what exactly which fabrics are. What I used a lot of is uh, page 30 and 31. And I'll put them over here for you so you can see what I mean. I used 30 and 31, which is showing you the placement of all the blocks for the half wings to actually look really detailed and figure out, try to figure out which fabrics go where. Cut. So now let's start piecing. So we'll start with the little mini, which is really small. Um, One of the lessons that I will tell you, because I worked, I, I learned this the hard way. Okay. And that is, I have set all of my blocks up exactly how the pattern showed me. And every time I sewed a piece together, I put it back where it needs to be. Because one, I want my seams to, you know, kind of lay over each other. And that will reinforce your seams. So it's not hard. It's just my little note to let you know to make sure you lay them down so that you piece them exactly as they should be. So all of these seams here will overlap. It just makes it stronger. All right. Without further ado, let's get sewing. So I have my block set up over here so that I can see what I'm going to sew first. And what I am going to sew is these two first. I hope you guys are having fun with this. I am. Um, so I get to thank you for letting me do this because if not, this quilt of mine probably would not get done only because there's so many other things that I have to do. I started quilting, actually free motion quilting, the patchwork Christmas quilt. So here we go. That's the first one done. And I really do recommend Best Pressed, which is a starch alternative, because it's really going to help when you're working with small pieces to make sure that they don't stretch. So I only got one row, one border row done on the Christmas, the patchwork Christmas quilt, but I like it. That one went together very, very fast for me. And we're going to iron it. These go together fairly quickly. I think it takes a lot longer on these to actually cut all the fabric and make sure that you have the right ones cut um, than it does to actually put these together. Once you, you know, I went back and forth at the pattern quite a few times just to make sure that I had the correct fabric. All 
But I do want to hear from you guys if you're enjoying this. If you're not enjoying it, let me know. I'm okay with that too. Uh, if you have something else that you want to do instead, let me know. I'm not saying that I can accommodate everybody, but I try. And just like that, the mini one is done. Very simple. Now we're going to keep going over the same things, meaning whatever your seam allowance is. Yes, yeah, quilting is supposed to be a quarter inch seam allowance. But if yours isn't and you're consistently different, as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. Don't freak out. The pieces are all going to fit together. So just go slow. There we go. All of my minis are done. Now we're going to work on the large, which I've laid out here. So I'm going to put these two together first. I'm not going to move this one over to my sewing table because it took me a lot just to get it where it needed to be. Get all the fabrics together. There's a lot of different, I mean, not completely different. We have multiple colors in the same fabric, but there is a lot of fabric in this quilt. And I do mean a lot. This would be a great one. Let's say you didn't have the kit. This is a great quilt to go through your staff for sure. Okay. You could actually get rid of some of your stash because it's not a lot of, other than the background, it's not a lot of fabric. You could easily a quarter or an eighth yard of here and there of stash fabric. All right. Time change must have really messed everybody up. Nobody wants to sew with me. All right, so here's the two that we sewed together already. Then we're going to just flip it over and sew this one. I don't pin. If you want to pin, that's okay. Not a problem. I just found I didn't need to pin on this. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. So this is the one that I just sewed on. I'm going to lay this on my ironing board with that piece up, newest piece always up on top, so that I can iron it once over and then flip it over. Like I said, this is a great quilt to hone your skills. So what does that mean? It means ironing and having nice, neat seams. Is it going to kill it? If you aren't 100% neat, no. But if you plan on quilting it, doing the free motion quilting yourself, whether you're going to do um, quilt as you go blocks, because you could do that ideally with this, or like me, do a custom quilt job on my long arm, having neat seams is going to help you later on. Because then your needle doesn't get stuck um, in... Oops. And you won't have any issues. Okay. Here's the piece we just sewed on. Now we're just going to keep on going all the way down. I 
I hope you guys are getting something out of this. I know I am. I'm enjoying it. I don't get to sew for myself very often. So doing something like this means I get to put a quilt together that I want to. Again, I'm going to lay it on top, lay it right on my ironing board this way with the piece we just sewed on top so that I can flip it. And if you look, see how nice and neat the seams are just over, going over each other? Just like if you were building an actual log cabin. What do I mean? So this seam is here. This seam is a full seam and it's covering on top of that seam and interlocking all the seams. Hence why they call it a log cabin. Ugh. I am a little tired. I'm hoping I get a second wind after this video so I can finish painting my kitchen cabinets because I have a lot to get done before the holidays when I have a house full of people. Okay, I just put this one back. And I know it sounds silly, keep putting the same pieces back, but I teach. In my, this is how I teach in the beginner's quilt class. The more you see it down and it's kind of rep repetitive, I know, but if you keep doing it the same way, you're not going to get mixed up and it'll go together much easier and you won't have to do any seam ripping. I hate to tell you, but I hate talking to myself. It's not fun. And that's what I feel like I'm doing is talking to myself. These videos can be very trying sometimes. And I know it's my fault because I messed up on the audio and I didn't check it. But I'm going to blame it on Daylight Savings. It, it's all the clock's fault. Just saying. All right. Here we go. And hopefully you guys aren't getting dizzy going back and forth. So here's it. here it is. And again, we're just going to flip and go. Tuesday, I will show you what I'm doing for the Christmas patchwork quilt for quilting. It's cute. I came up with, uh, no, not me personally, but one of the ones that I picked out from my cheese looks like peppermint candy on my border. It's going to be so cute. See all my little piles of blocks? have cut just to make sure I don't miss something or mix them up. This is going to be easy. Next week, remember, we're not going to have a video. You've got to finish all of your log cabin blocks. And the next part is 22 log cabin blocks. So, you got a lot to do. Okay, here we go. Again, I'm just going to flip and go. I don't think you need to see me sewing the same thing over and over again. And that's all these blocks are. Just pay attention. Oops, my thread came out. Just pay attention to your fabrics. Meaning, check, you know, the old saying. Um, check twice, cut once. And I did a lot of that this morning. And I think I did good. I mean, I haven't gone through too many of the blocks yet. But just take your time. Make sure you're cutting the right fabric at the right size. Um, and go slow when you're cutting. And all I did when to cut this fabric 
is each of the fabrics I cut out a one and whatever a strip. I cut a strip the width of fabric and then put it on its side and cut all of my rectangle. Simple, simple. I don't know what else I can tell you. Bonnie Hunter. Okay. Everybody loves Bonnie Hunter. I love Bonnie Hunter's Mr. Cook. I don't get a chance to sew them. I have every intention in the world when I start. But there's a ton of little pieces. So what my recommendation is for a lot of people. Oh, done. Okay. Here we are so far again. I'm going to do the next one. My recommendation is to get a little bit more than half of the fabric and only do half of the blocks. Now, that way it's a lot man, a lot more manageable than, don't get me wrong, she's got some beautiful designs, but it is a lot. So, think about doing just that. Does that mean half will automatically work on a quilt every time? No. You may have to do one extra block um, to give you the nine by nine or three by four blocks or whatever, perhaps. But you will get some great experience doing some amazing designs and you will love it. Everybody, she's the only designer that does scrappy that I can even look at because I'm just not a scrappy quilter. Mine have to be organized chaos. So even with her quilts, you know, she'll tell you four or five blues, six to eight whites. Oh, no, no. It's one white for me, one blue for me. That's just me. I can't. I learned that lesson a long time ago. I am not a scrappy quilter. I have a very hard time doing scrappy quilts. So how I do hers is I pick one fabric for each of these, not a bunch of fabrics to go for this one color. And then I can put her quilts together. All right, this is the one we just cut, put, I mean, sewed on. Here's the next one. So this is not difficult. It's just time consuming. It's simple. And you can square up your blocks afterwards. The idea is you don't want to stretch these. Okay, we've got a lot of strips here. It's easy to stretch one out of shape. And then your whole block is a little bit off. So just go slow. And don't, don't iron them into submission. Okay? That's another reason why the starch is really going to help you. Because it's going to help keep your block square. Almost done. We've got three more sets of strips. Can you imagine trying to do a video with 22 blocks? Yeah. No. I don't think we need to. Now, again, just pushing it over. Now, look, I am not perfect. Some of these I know I cut longer than I needed to. So what am I going to do? I'm going to lay it down and even it up here, even it up here, and I'm going to stitch according to this top piece. Whoops. So... Trust me, in the big scheme of things, nobody is going to see it. At the end, nobody's going to notice any boo-boos. They're not going to see anything wrong. They're just going to think it's a beautiful 
beautiful quilt. Okay. So I do have a little bit longer over here, and I'm okay with that because when I square my block up at the end, it'll be beautiful. If you guys have any questions at all, all you have to do is post them here or on the YouTube page. My YouTube page has all of the videos as we go. So sometime this week, I'll put this video up too. Um, and you can comment there or you can comment here in the group. Oh, we're getting there. There we go. What I'm going to do. Turn it over and stitch it down. Simple, simple. So if you never knew what a log cabin block entails, now you do. I've, I'll be honest. I don't mind doing log cabins when we do them in a quilt like this, which is more like a sampler. I have done one log cabin quilt and I had it all cut with my AccuCut and I couldn't wait to finish it <laughs> because it's the same old, same old, same old. So it was, yeah, if I had to do every, you know, a hundred blocks, all exactly the same fabric, yeah, no, that would not work for me. I like samplers, so you get to learn a couple of different blocks, but you're not doing a ton of the same block. That drives me. I just don't have the patience for it. Um, having, uh, let me think of one that we did recently. I don't remember the name of it, but we did it with Alice and Glass, where they're all stars, but I did them in different fabrics from her um that was good i don't mind that it was still only 12 stars and they were big blocks if i had to do a ton of log cabin blocks like this everybody has their favorites and quotes that they don't like so you kind of gear your patterns and your collections accordingly. I've been done a long time and I would not, I would just get bored too easily. And I don't want to get bored. So what are you guys doing for the holidays? Anything fun? I'm already thinking about my Christmas decorations. And we haven't have any, haven't even had Thanksgiving yet, but that's okay. Because I have a shop to decorate in a house. And I have my granddaughter coming for a visit for Christmas. So I'm super happy. It means I have to do more than I would if it was just me and my husband. Christmas is my holiday. Oops. I wonder if you can hear Lobo in the background. I have the door shut, but you hear Almost done. I have one more strip set to go. Now you're going to see that it's not. I have a little bit of a jagged edge. I'm okay with that. Trust me, because I will be using this block here as my um, starting point to square up my block. I'm okay with it. I know I cut these towards the end a little bit longer than I needed. That's okay. This is not hard. 
There's no rules. I'm telling you right now. So I lined it up here and I've got that little bit over. That's okay. I'm going to use this red fabric as my guide and you're not going to see anything. It's not going to create a ton of bulk. It's fine. I'm all about fudging. Fudging makes me happy. You know why? I don't like to use Jack the Ripper. He's a pain. So I, over the years, have come up with ways to fudge things that I don't have to do. Theme Ripper. And in the grand scheme of things, when you look at this portion of the wing, oops, you're not going to see anything. You're not going to see any boo-boos. Trust me when I tell you. If you happen to have somebody, when you know, go, you, you go like this and say, look at my pretty quilt. Don't go, okay, wait a minute. But don't look over here because I made a little bit mistake there. No, this one didn't come out too good. You just say, see what I did. And if you get anybody that comes up to you and starts pointing and saying, I think that's a little off or there's a mistake, run the other way. You know why? Because they ain't your friends. Just enjoy yourself. That's the number one rule. Okay? This is not a cheap hobby. It's not a quick hobby. So, you have to enjoy yourself. If you're not enjoying yourself, then guess what? I think you got to pick something else or change how you're doing it. It's supposed to be fun. I don't have, personally, I don't have any quilt police in my shop, and I don't have any quilt police at home. Why? Because I don't like them. And I don't think they're necessary. All right, my final strip is this one right here. And yes, it's a little longer. No worries. I know for a fact, because I've quilted this before, that from here to here is the right size. So, when I clean everything up and make sure it lines up right there, it's all fine. It's easy. I will tell you, log cabins are an easy block, but they are easy to mess up if you iron them into submission. You don't want to do that. Because then what will happen is, let's see if I can show you close up. If you start ironing them into submission, you're going to have bumps. Little outcrops here. And you're not going to have a nice straight line. And you don't want that. Other than that, as long as you don't iron them into submission, use your starch. Go slow. Make sure you have the right fabric because ain't nobody's going to want to rip this whole block out to get to this one strip. Because if it was me, I'd say that was a design choice. For design variation, I would not be un unstitching it for nothing. All right, this is the last one. I let the iron do the do do its job. So I'm not I don't hold my iron and go ugh, ugh. I just lay it down and move it over. Then I put the starch on. It's really important to get used to that. So you don't have any crazy things going on with your block. You don't want wonky blocks. Here we go. There it is. And when I lie this one on top, guess what? We're good. So this is what you're going to look like when you're done squaring it up. All right, everybody. 
that's it for today and for this week. So don't forget, next week we're not going to have a video because you've got 22 blocks, 22 more log cabin blocks to finish after this week. We've got eight this week and 22 next week, which means that's 30 log cabin blocks. That's more than enough for anybody. So I will not see you next week, which is um, the 12th, but I will see you on the 19th, which is the Sunday before Thanksgiving, unless I get enough people telling me that that's too close to Thanksgiving. All right. You know where I am if you guys need me. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye.